Edna mento a pe mapa. Gicinendem genico che ci mi coa uie. Dopo da mawe. Caminendo a Anishinabe ui. Che no maget. Anishinabe ken da swin. Ui quem kong don ci pam in a domine sing. Al sini que. Anishinabe no swin bim we don. Ma coge endo dem. Mi coge niue. Cabe. Cabe. Nagatoa. Che pina. Kibe. Cop mi coana. Tu da pen mawe, nishnabe, kami, kami nint, nishnabe, nishnabe adzuin. Ngasaga na shim dash, sastago ana. So I guess um, uh, when uh, you're talking about program, I, I think what I'll do is just talk about um, my own experience in terms of um, indigenous knowledge because that's kind of where I'm coming from these days. And Anishinaabe way of knowing, of learning, and being a, a product of the residential school system, it uh, really uh, destroyed a sense of, of pride or, or um, good feeling about self and all of those issues that come from, from that experience. So it wasn't until in my youth that I began to seek out indigenous knowledge and indigenous way of being, our own way of learning, of educating. So right from the beginning, it was in my early 20s when I heard the sound of the drum and how it really impacted on my psyche. That's really what caused me to uh, begin searching and doing my own my own research and it didn't happen right away it's almost like i had to seek out the knowledge keepers the ones that held on to that knowledge that was um, was hidden and uh, so it took a while it took a while and i had to travel i had to travel to find the uh, the grandmothers and the grandfathers to seek out that knowledge. So it did take a while. And my journey took me to a community in the mountains out west and where um, I was reintroduced, I guess I could say, uh, reconnected to the land. And for me, I guess, that's one of the things I feel quite strongly about is um, that sense of connection with the land is where our um, indigenous knowledge, uh, because we are, we are of the land, we are a people of the land, and we have a strong connection with the land, with uh, the earth, uh, our mother, and that uh, relationship and that connection that we have with the land and all of creation is where um, uh, that knowledge comes from. And the fact that we are of the land is what makes us indigenous, I guess, uh, is what I'm trying to say. And what an incredible realization for me to come to that place in my life, in my youth, when the elders, the grandmothers and the grandfathers uh, encouraged me and uh, and told me that Everything in life, everything in creation is a spirit, and uh, that I had a spirit. That was pretty uh, profound for me, that everything, every human being, and non-humans, I guess uh, I could say, uh, in terms of uh, the four-leggeds, the swimmers, the crawlers, and uh, the flyers, uh, the trees, the plant life, Everything, everything in creation, the, the, the stars, the cosmos, the universe, uh, the waters, the water beings, everything has a spirit. And that, for me, that was very profound. That was quite an incredible realization to, to be able to, uh, to feel that and to see that and to embrace, embrace that concept, that understanding, and to be able to to see to see that and as a way of realizing myself as a way of finally uh, 
coming to a place of knowing who I am and where I come from. So from that uh, sense of, uh, of feeling empty and lost, it was a beautiful realization. And of course, and of course, I wanted to uh, to share that uh, great blessing with uh, with my loved ones, with family. So coming home back to uh, my place of birth and uh, sharing that. And uh, it's been my life, my, my life work, because of the profound uh, way that it, it spoke to me at that time in my youth. And so it's been a lifelong journey for me to embrace, embrace uh, our teachings, our, our ceremonies, our culture, and uh, our songs, our dances, uh, the the spirit uh, of uh, the way that we we do things. And so, of course, um, when I first heard the sound of uh, the Medewin water drum, again, what an incredible, beautiful, beautiful blessing. Again, to hear the songs, the sacred songs. And there was an incredible sense of home. I was welcomed home. And uh, it was spirit that was welcoming me home. It was the ancestors that was welcoming me home as though I had been lost for a long time. And finally, there was, uh, there was this place uh, that I could come home to. And it was to sit, to be with ceremony, to learn, to pick up this knowledge our way of of uh, educating, our way of of learning and uh, passing on that sacred knowledge. So that that for me was another uh, big revelation to uh, to come to that place where that sense of belonging and hearing the songs, hearing the teachings of the water drum of the Medewin and the dances and the teachings and the songs. And there was that sense of coming to a place of great healing. And it truly and truly uh, filled my life. And so I encouraged my loved ones, my children to pick up, to dance and to do powwow, jingle dress dancing, powwow dancing, drumming and uh, all of that. And the connection with with the land was vital. And so uh, years later, it was uh, getting into plant life and learning about those medicines and uh, seeing them, seeing them as our grandmothers and our grandfathers uh, having a, a personal relationship with the plant life, with creation, and seeing it as family, seeing creation as my extended family, and so that connect with the rest of creation. And so, what a blessing, what a blessing. And I often wondered, our people had this knowledge. That's why they were able to survive for so many years, for since the beginning of time that they were lowered here. They have survived, and they had a strong connection with the land, they took care. The earth took care of them. Creation took care of them. And they it was a reciprocal relationship. They, there was that strong, strong, because it sustained them. And it was, uh, it was a strong connection. And look where we were, you know. Um, when the settlers came, it was a different way of, of learning, a different uh, way of thinking was brought here. Our way was disrupted. It didn't happen right away, but uh, 500 years of our people being uh, in the dark. And for me, uh, the way I see it now, where we are, I, uh, I see our young people beginning to, uh, to turn things around. Uh, I see the incredible beauty of uh, the young ones and uh, the strength that they have in terms of uh, not being afraid of sending their voices out and not being shy to say what's important. And uh, again, uh, they're speaking for the earth. They're speaking for the water. There's, they're, uh, they're speaking about the significance and the importance of uh, our ways of 
of our knowledge, our knowledge ways. And um, so for me, uh, that's what I see in terms of the shift. But we also, as educators, have to, uh, especially uh, and the dominant society, the settler society, I guess I can say that they, uh, they're not, uh, they haven't, um, uh, they have to be enlightened and um, our people have to be empowered. They have to, and it's us, we have to empower ourselves. We have to do it ourselves and change the system, change the educational system, the way it runs, the way it is run today. And that means um, turning, transforming, making a transformation, turning things around. And it has to start right at the beginning and when i say the beginning when when the kids are small when the when our little ones are small and uh, as soon as uh, you hear uh, movement and uh, uh, and uh, a stirring of uh, of life uh, then um, we send out uh, a sound and uh, talk to that spirit that is starting to is going to emerge those ones that are yet to come, they're, they're getting ready to come into the world, then we should be uh, they should be greeted in the language and even in the womb, the mother should be talking to that life uh, in the language and singing. The father should be singing and uh, I guess for me that was... Uh, that's one of the regrets that I have is that I haven't done a good job uh, doing that. And uh, so, but I encourage our people to do that. That first and foremost is, is the language is vital. Because if we, if we don't, if we lose the language, then, uh, then it's a simulation. We might as well just uh, be like everybody else, like the settler society and become like mainstream society, get into the melting pot, I guess. Um, so the language is, is vital and uh, um, speaking to the spirit of, of uh, that new life, uh, the spirit that has just come in. And, and uh, so in the, in the school system, um, I know uh, what the Maori people have done is uh, they started with their little ones, total immersion and language nests. And so bringing out and having the parents come bringing their little ones. So um, something like that has to, has to happen uh, at the beginning when the little ones are starting to talk because they mimic you and uh, they're sponges. They pick up. They'll pick up the language uh, a lot faster if we just uh, talk to them in the language. And so for me, the language is, is vital. And also the connection with the family, with uh, the extended family, with the community, the, uh, the circle, your, your community, the connection with the land. I think one of the ways um, is, um, is to have uh, land-based uh, curriculum. For me, um, I've been involved with lodge teachings, with ceremonies, and we do a lot of um, a teaching um, uh, in that way. It's all, it's all oral and it's all in the language. We uh, teach in the language, we teach the songs in the language, and we give the teachings in, in the language. And it's, it's a ceremony. So uh, you're, you're uh, connecting with not only the body, but the mind and the spirit. When we first started, it was very, very uh, difficult to change our way of thinking because we had been so ingrained in thinking a certain way. We took up the settler's way of, of, of thinking and it uh, brought about confusion. And uh, so trying to uh, shed that, trying to um, change that way of thinking and, and putting a, on our own 
values, our own way of thinking, our own attitudes, our own way of our own ceremonies and, and wearing wearing that because that's essentially who, who we are as a people. And so um, change has been slow. For me, um, it's taken over 40 years when I uh, was trying to bring the knowledge of our ancestors to our people in my community. And I was basically told, we don't want that Indian stuff, and it's not going to get you anywhere. But I, I, I was one of those people who was stubborn, I guess, and determined. And I knew how I felt and how it affected me, how it changed my life. And so I, I persevered and I kept going and I sought out the knowledge from, from ceremony, from the sweat lodge and from the elders, the grandmothers, and shared that, continued to share it. And now, 40 years later, there's, uh, there's um, a Medewin uh, Lodge in, uh, in my community, uh, and uh, there's sweat lodges there. And so uh, change is, uh, is inevitable. It does come about. Um, we just have to have faith and, and believe in, in, uh, in the spirit, and we can, and we will with determination, uh, we can we can change, we can transform, we can turn things around, and so uh, I I believe that because I've seen it, I've seen it, and uh, yes, it is slow, but it does happen.